Snow Honored, and I'm doing a, uh, this is going to be a video where I talk about uh, basically the first sort of A-frame component I've developed. Um, so this is going to be, uh, I'm going to demo what it does first, talk a little bit about what it does, and then I'll actually talk about the actual code itself and sort of how I structured it and how it works in a basic like high level view and yeah I'll just talk about that I mean I've just only just like pushed this to github there's an npm package as well not really done a huge amount of testing on it uh, yet I've only really just pushed made, made it public today um, but I thought I'd just talk a bit about this it's a RAN generator so the whole idea of it is that basically it's a sort of um, it's a component that allows you to generate randomly positioned, randomly generated amount of primitives and models with JLB format and essentially just allows you to, with seed values, basically generate, like I said, a random, random amount of entities, shapes, it could be primitives, the, ran the primitives are randomly selected and uh, you can also use random models. So I'll just show you that. So the GitHub pages has just been updated and it doesn't look too pretty at the minute. It's basically just like a bunch of demo pages, essentially, that um, sh sort of demonstrate what you can do with it. So I'll show this first and then just talk a little about, bit about each demo. And then I'll also demonstrate how you can modify the seed values, modify, play with it and ge to generate your own, um, you know, sort of customized scenes. And then finally, for the final part, I'll go really in, de in depth into the actual component code, how I've done that, why I've done that, and you know, sort of how everything works sort of thing. Um, so that's that. So I'll just, uh, I'll just make this full screen. There we go. I'll just make this full screen. So this is the, this will be on the GitHub pages. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put the link to this below if you want to actually have a look at it as well. This is sort of like the, just the demo pages showing off different, examples or templates if you you can use them as templates if you wish of different scenarios so we've got um so this with this component you can also generate multiple versions of it so in the same scene so i've got two the, ba the basic two um core examples of one with multiple two with multiples and then three with just a single component generating shapes so we'll look at the most basic use of this uh, and, you, and I've tried to make it very uh, open so that you can basically do a lot of different things of it and it's quite customizable. That's sort of what I've been trying to do with this thing. Um, so uh, to let me say so like so there's two main modes, loading random primitives or loading random models, but there's a bunch of other sort of options you, you can do. Anyway, let's just demo one of the things so this is an example this is a single component with completely uh random texture allocation random color allocation and and obviously seed values um, determining the amount of spread of the random primitives so the whole idea of this is that it's for um generating just completely random uh, geometry and then spreading it over a scene. I mean, obviously this has got certain seed values, which I'll talk about a little bit later, which determine the sort of amount of spread, the amount of shapes generated. Also, one very cool thing, which I'm glad I've managed to implement is you can also export these scenes as a GLB model. So for example, it has the functionality now. So if I just click this button here, export as GLB, just do that. See, it exports it as a GLTF file. And then if I go off this quickly, if I go onto something like FreeJS Editor, which is a great little tool, let's go to new one, and I'll import in that downloaded file, which I've just created, right? So it's there, scene free, it's just a generic name for now. Import that in. I'll add a light so that you can see anything, because obviously FreeJS Editor, if you don't have any. And we have then everything there. And uh, doesn't seem to have been put, it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it ex exports the texture, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but the basic functionality for doing that is there. So you could then, you could export the, the scene which I've generated here. 
and then you could then you know do whatever you wanted to it and you could imp import it into another into a 3d program you can import it in for a game now the use cases for this are basically ah, you're only limited by your imagination really maybe you want to do it for creating a star system you can also customize glb models i'll show you, i'll show you that and load those in instead of uh, random primitives Obviously, like for the random primitives, that's a, there's a certain limited use case for that, maybe in a lot of respects, but you can also, um, uh, like on the basic level, that's that's sort of what it does. So we're trying to make a bunch of random primitives from the, the uh, primitives you can generate with an O-frame and then randomize the positionings. And the textures obviously can be customized. These are just a bunch of, so you'll see some of the, like, this, like Sparta. So I actually, for this one, just for these demo scenes, I just create, got a load of bunch of scenes for films, just because, I mean, it's, why not really? But you can you can customize that to anything. You can also flag, there's a flag for customize, uh, turning on and off random color. So you don't have to have the random color applied. Um, that's just, in this example basically if that makes sense so yeah i mean i'll that's this is an example of yeah like random color random texture um a certain seed value which i believe is i can't remember it's exactly and then um basically for the shape generation that is also randomized so you put in the minimum amount of shapes you want and the maximum amount of shapes you want and then it will generate something in between the min and the max values which so basically i mean the whole idea of this is it's generative madness procedurally generating uh scenes and then you can export them as a glb which can be useful so that's like this is an example of like yeah like i said commonly common um a common sort of other use case or output that you get from this component if you go into the inspector quickly i'll just show you the sort of hierarchy of how things are done so we have, I'll just go up here a bit. Right? So control alt and I, it's how you get into the inspector in A-frame if you didn't know that already. We, uh, we go to, um, the, so basically this is the entity. The entity round gen is where, <clears throat> that's the actual component code like that we add. So we have, we have a, and then all the basic associated um, entities get generated here. So these are all randomly created with JavaScript and the component code. Um, and they're given a unique ID, which I'll talk about more later anyway, but that's basically the hierarchy of it. So there's quite a lot that I created because obviously 343, so I would probably gave it quite high min and max values in this instance, probably between, I guess, 200 and 500 or something. And it's created those. And of course, like if I run this again, I'll get a completely randomized positioning, randomized the number as well. So if I go log out of here, you can see the positions are slightly different. Um, it's generating completely unique textures. Everything, literally every time you do it, is completely unique. Um, and then, you know, you can just sort of, you can tweak these values of code. Um, I've got the stats there running just for just this is interesting for seeing that. And then you can, again, you can export it as a GLB. So um, also, let me just run over um, the uh, other sort of demos which are in the, um, which are in the, the, the GitHub pages which you can have a look at. So that's the one example where we're generating primitives of customized textures. I'll talk a little bit about loading the assets in. It's not really that hard, actually. Um, okay, so this is an example of just like a bit more bare bones example, right? So we've got customized colors, no textures applied this time. So we've just set the flag for custom textures to false, which it is by default, I think. And we have, again, like just a random, random colors obviously being on and quite a lot of primitives generated in this case. So you can see where this could become useful, say for example, if you wanted to use it for video game enemies, maybe you want to create a space game and you just want to create an arcade sort of game and you want to, uh, you know, have a random amount of this stuff generated. You could even expand this further to create a random asteroid belts, random planets, I mean, they're really the, limits on your imagination once again you can export it out let's just have a quick look in the inspector 
and again you see the same obviously it's the same code so it's just doing the same thing just with different flags in the um so this time we we had created 400 actually so it's a bit more this time probably the seed values are a bit different and i'll talk more about that later but okay let's go off that i'm just going to go back i'll show now uh so we can also use custom models which i'll talk about how you can implement those in a bit but um so for example this is using a single component uh, reference for the random generator and basically i just start to replicate like a fish a school of fish basically so this is using models instead of um uh, generating random primitives so you can also do that which can be which could be very useful like i said for there's the example of the asteroid belt you could uh, you could use in that case so there you go so we've got this fishes here right i don't think we've put glb on this one but it, sh it does work i've done it on some of the other ones but there you go, so you've got now like random school of fish generated. Um, probably need to test and debug a few things on this. It seems like sometimes, um, not in this, only in this example for some reason, but it seems like sometimes you get overlap on some of the generated uh, models. I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, seems like after about five of the, and it seems to only occur on this demo, you have like of this with the fish that you get. Uh, a little bit of overlap so it's, i'm not sure that's something i'm gonna to have to debug but that's just one other example of that and probably the slightly better examples at the minute are the multiple components generating uh, um so this is actually generating primitives mixed with um glb so uh, let's go on to i'll go on to this one first though. so like say if you want to do multiple components and you wanted to do two different models basically we can do that as well so in this example we've got um yeah it's like a sort of street scene with this hotel models and these little houses i know I, obviously i've added the floor myself it's not generated by the thing but just in the scene you can do that and if i was to click refresh again uh once more i'm going to just generate a bunch of random houses and um that's pretty cool actually like this in this is sort of use case where you want say you want to generate an urban environment for example i mean this is very basic i'm using basic models and that but you could uh you could really go to town with this and basically you could add in like, i don't know seven different types of models adjust the seed values and essentially you'd be able to procedurally generate a town on some respects obviously it's not ever going to be perfectly uh it's never going to be perfectly um tuned you might have to do some more tuning but the, the amazing thing about this really in a way or well, the good thing or the real use case thing for this is export this is a glb model right there we go let's export it number four i can go to and this is where it becomes useful right really is and i go to my free js uh, editor or you know whatever you maybe want to use blender or you know it's commonly used one but i'm just using this because it's web-based i go to the gltf i've just created import the model in and you know without much real effort well no effort at all really you've got there you go there you go you've got a randomly generated scene with all these uh, and i can add uh, yeah, I've got the directional light and yeah and this just retains all its textures in this example seems a bit hit and miss with that i'm not exactly sure why but basically for if you if you're working with glb um files like that one oh, i don't want to do that sorry or you can just like you've got access to the full hierarchy there and all this sort of thing and you can basically you can just you now if i want to move that i can just shift it around on that one um you can just move things around if you want like if you want to select this one you want to see you want to move it well basically it just gives you that ability to create randomly created cities actually so that's one place where i think this could be really useful as well is basically like i said like doing you want to create you just want to procedurally generate a sort of city scene um you could apply this to a vr game you could apply it to an you know, a-frame browser based game you can apply it to many different things really and you can export it out you can use it just in the game itself or you can export it out and uh 
customize it and then import you import it into a game or what have you that's one of the main reasons i wanted to do the export because i think it's just very useful and then you can because you know like a lot of these generated scenes you can more or less get like the positioning and you know tweaking it with the seed values to make uh, uh, a little enough variation for it to look natural um but obviously there will be scenarios where you're going to want to take well, that looks relatively natural it's fairly spread i mean probably too much but again you could add in multiple glb elements to um increase the natural lookingness of the scene if that makes sense <laughs> um okay so finally we'll on to the final example and i've got a lot to go through here actually so i'm not gonna spend too much time retreading old ground so i'm running this locally now but you cannot there was also there should be a nice little GitHub's pages running eventually. Oh, no, that's the one I was on before. So the final one I was going to show was just, I mean, same thing, basically, just with uh, a mixture of primitives and GLB. So, for like, for example, um, like the last one was using um, a GLB model and um, just GLB models, whereas this is a mixture of primitives being randomly generated and uh, GLB models, which is, I mean, it's quite random, like, but so I can export that out again. Export as a GLTF. I go here, new. Uh, Fujiset.org editor is very useful, by the way, if you didn't know it already. Import this in. So I use, I use this one for a lot for just general, like, checking models and stuff. Basically. It's quite useful because it's cloud based, it's on the web, you don't need any specialist. <clears throat> so I just add a directional light again so I can see things. And if I zoom out, right, right, zoom out a bit. Okay, there we go. So now uh, the same scene again. Textures seem to sometimes work with the primitives, sometimes not. I'm not exactly sure why. That, possibly that will change. But like I said, for for the basic functionality of exporting to GLTF and then being you know you being able to modify that later, it functions. It works. So. Uh, I'm going to try and maintain this a lot as much as I can do and bug fixes and all that sort of thing. Uh, I'll just so do, 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 do. this is the GitHub page for it. It's just my on my um, GitHub, of course, and then ranjen hyphen a frame. And I'll talk a little bit now about basically how you use it. And I'm not going to go over the README too much because I refer to it, but I mean, you can read all that. It's going to be pretty boring if I just do that. I'll talk now. I'll, now I'll, I'll look at some of the code. So we'll look first at the uh, most basic example, which is we're not using any textures, we're not using any um, nothing fancy, just literally um, generating random primitives. Uh, and that's that. I'll just put this into presentation mode quickly. And we can have a look at it, right? So, there we go. So, of course, it's just a HTML file. Um, I've, like I said, I've, I've, I've imported, um, and you can view this in the demos folder. So, uh, on the GitHub, the uh, you need to obviously to include the component code. In this case, it's just ramgen.js. There's also a minified version, but this is just using the raw JS file. <coughs> uh, if you want to do the, um, if you want to implement the um, importing of GLB, then you're going to have to import in this as well. But you can refer to the demo page for that. So that's for the exporting the, G the actual scene as a GLBF, which is an optional feature as well. You don't have to do that. Sort of lazy. Um, okay. And so let's just go over this quickly. This is literally just camera stuff. Oh, oh my God. You don't have to do any of that, obviously. Let's just look at the actual main uh, main component itself so this is where this is an example of using the ramgen component so assuming that you've imported in um, ramgen.js and that's gone fine this is an example of using it so I've given it an idea of ramgen you can give it anything that's not too important the important bit here is to add this to the entity that you create Rand gen and it has to be exactly written like that okay Rand gen all lowercase 
that's it. And then we pass the options. So this is, again, like I said, for creating a component which generates random primitives with just, I mean, this is essentially more or less the generic options, pretty much. So I've added, I've said the minimum amount of shapes that can be generated, and it obviously, again, has to be written exactly like that, and it's just camel casing. Uh, minimum shapes, 400, and then the maximum shapes, 700. So it means that there's a function in the code which will generate um, a random amount of values between 400 and 700. So it could be 555, could be 401, seven, uh, 699. Makes sense, really. Custom GLB is just, that's gen that's generically set to false, but I've just passed it through as false there, but it usually is false. I don't actually need that there, really. I can take that off. With textures, is false. So we're not using any textures in the example, so we just passed it. Uh, be only in a false, so it won't load any random textures. And we're using random color in this example, so the, the 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 boolean for that is just random color makes sense really so yeah we want to generate random color on every primitive you can also generate random lights um, um well not random lights to sort of like attach to every other 50 percent of the entities essentially um so yeah and that might i might retweak that a bit later but basically you can do that too and then the random seed value, and you can also add random seed scale in that as well, but basically the random seed just sort of determines the um, distribution of how randomly everything is distributed. And then I've just given it zero, zero, zeros for everything because I want it basically in the middle. Um, and that is basically how you customize a, a random scene with regenerating random uh, primitives with random colors, and that will work. That, that will work. I mean, that's, that's what I've done here. Obviously, just as I said, the main things to remember, make sure, and it doesn't, obviously it's not always gonna be in component, this is just my example, but make sure that this, wherever the component code, which could be minified or could be round gen, is, is referred to, of course, or if you're using NPM, which is possible, but I'm not tested it much, and obviously make sure that's there. And again, obviously just remember that you have to have a CDM reference or, or whatnot to the exporter if you wanna implement that, which have, uh, one other thing to mention as well, is of course, if you're implementing the uh, custom GLB, you're gonna need to have a button with ID of export button. Now you can customize this with CSS however you like. I've just kept it really plain, to be honest, but uh, just make sure that ID is the same, because it based, if that, um, if the flag for custom GLB is set to true, then, um, then yeah, the event listener for the click event is at is, attached to that ID, so just make sure that's uh, the same. Okay, and then I'll, I'll, show, I'll show the code for the few of the other demos, briefly talk about each one, and then I'll also just dive into the actual component core code itself, really. So let's look at maybe, we'll look to this. So with textures, just a note on this. So basically if you wanna load in textures, obviously we need to load in the assets, so you, you do this anyway in O-Frame, so where you've got your array assets um, markup, you put in there every single text you wanna load in. So in my example, I've got a folder called textures, and I've given it an ID, very important actually, and and then I give it the reference to each, um, each uh, picture. Uh, and that's pretty much that really. This is also for the sky, but Again, that's not required. Uh, and I'll talk about this just where it's a bit different. So obviously we've got custom texture. We do want to have, we do want to load uh, thin coat textures in. Uh, and if you're loading in custom textures, you need to pass it this flag, custom texture IDs. This is a type array. So we need to give it the IDs. And uh, you can do this from in theory to an unlimited amount of textures, right? So I'll just, so basically we've, Obviously, we've got, we've got ID one there, film one, film two, film three. I'm pretty easy in this case, but that could literally be anything. So you could put blah, 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 and you could put blah, 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 blah. Make sure the commas separated. <clears throat> and then in the code itself, it just gets loaded into an array. And then all the magic happens behind the scenes. Um, this one's got random color, seed values, blah, 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 all the same, really. And uh, in this example, export to GLB is truth, so then I can then export it via export button as a GLB in this example. Um, we'll have a look a quick look at GLB files because there's something you'll have to consider for that if you're going to load in GLBs. Um, so 
when uh, we are uh, wanting to load in the GLB file, we have to um, prepare the asset uh, with this flag a uh, with this um, markup a hyphen asset hyphen item. We give it an ID. That's the most important thing there, apart from the actual source of the model. So I've got a folder for some models, um, just a bunch of random stuff I found on the internet. And you need to put the source there with the model and then the file reference and make sure the ID is there. Make sure obviously it's in assets and then make sure you close it. Um, and then custom models. There's basically just a flag called custom models. You add in uh, the ID. So this is, in this case, it's fish. I'll be on the ID there. And then the fish is there. So that, that one is that one, basically. Um, and then, you know, just the usual other stuff from before. Okay, so, and then for multiples, again, it's pretty much the same process. Maybe you just want to change the ID because you want unique IDs on each. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you wanted to do multiples of this, you could, in theory, you could just add as many as you wanted. It does support multiple um, instances of the component. So you can just add round gen, round gen, round gen three, round gen four, round gen five, round gen five, round gen six. Just make sure they're all customized right. You can position them a bit differently, like if you're doing this example. So off offset this one, for example, um, minus 15 on the Z axis, um, just so it's not on top of the other one. So you could get creative with that. You could load up different round generators and basically just create different types of scenes with mixed settings. So that's quite useful. I've tried to make it that way so it's customizable and you can really just you know sort of open-ended that way okay so that's probably enough for all that stuff like covering the demos um like i said also with the textures you can literally that can be any file but just as long as, long as the path and the texture exists it should work fine i'm probably going to try and implement some more actual debugging sort of feedback in the in the component code which is what we'll look at now. Uh, there is like the, um, there's a minified version of it and uh, just a normal version. So, but we're not gonna look at, you know, uh, we're gonna look at the, um, the component core code. So if you just wanna know how to use a component, you've basically just, you don't have to go into all this. I just wanna sort of cover actually about how it's been programmed and, um, yeah, just basically going to the hardcore sort of elements of how it's how it's coded and the thoughts behind it and you know all that sort of thing. So if you just want to know how to use the the component, then uh, I guess tune out now. Really. <laughs> um, okay, so we just got a little bit at the top, just saying what it does, what the point of it is. Um, this here is for um, just for the um, GLTF for the GLB expulsion. So. Um, so yeah, we want to register this component random generator. Uh, this here is just for, so it allows for multiple um, version, uh, multiple components in the same scene. That's usually set to false, so that's the reason that's obviously set there to true because we have to override the, the generic false value for that, for that setting. Um, and then, yeah, well, I'll just go over each one of these. Minimum shapes, minimum amount of shapes that uh, will be generated within the component. Maximum amount of shapes, well, uh, the maximum amount of shapes, so like I said, between uh, 10 and 20 in this example. The defaults are just, yeah, 10 and 20, so it doesn't generate loads. Uh, custom GLB, which is set to false by generic, is just if you're gonna load in a custom model. Obviously it's set to false because um, we can't assume that somebody's gonna load in a model, and you have to sort of do that, and you have to reference it properly, so that's set to false. The export to GLB, again, it's another like sort of additional function, so it's just set to false. With textures is actually set to true. Probably I should set that to false, but I, I might do that later actually. But basically that's just for, you know, for if you want to add textures, the randomized textures, really it should be set to false. I should, I should really change that. Um, lights is again, is the random lights generation if you want to include that. So again, it's just set to false, but you can set it to true and then it generates some random lights as well. I mean, the, uh, random color, it's like a, Pretty obvious, just random colors on each primitive that's generated. Make flat, I've not mentioned that already actually. So that make flat is basically if you want a flat scene. So say for example, where we had the, the scene that I was doing before, you need to set make flat to true. I should have mentioned that before actually, but 
because otherwise you get random Y values that are also uh, uh, generated, which will make everything be spread around like Y axis as well. So uh, if you want it to be a flat scene, just on one unit, want the same uh, Y axis value, then just put make flat to true. Generically, it's false. Um, random seed is the seed that we use for sort of generating the randomness, basically. Random seed scale, same thing, just for the scale. <clears throat> Custom texture IDs is a type array, and it's basically just the textures. So if you got with textures on true, we want to pass it generic uh, texture values. It's set generically to just an empty array. And custom models, same thing, just for custom models. So that's that. And then as I look there, so basically um, I've tried to do everything so that I can create this sort of very reusable <clears throat> functions, which I can just use again and again for, so some of the, some of the functions for the actual uh, component are um, um, utility functions. A lot of them are really. There's some core functionality, which is basically like make sculpture, make shapes and things. But I'll go a bit further into this. So uh, I want to access the data of this component. Um, so I've just added this uh, keyword and then the data. So that, that, that then accesses the, uh, the data on the component, which is basically the way that we access. So for example, yeah, like if you've got minimum amount of shapes, we, we do data and then we've got the, that minimum shapes and then we can access that that um that data which is passed into the which can be customized obviously that's the point of it uh that's just a reference to the element itself um uh random this variable is using a function utility function which i've generated which i'll show below uh which is used frequently throughout the um the component to basically, like I said, generate in between a minimum and a maximum value, a completely random number. But that's fairly obvious. And then when it when the actual component loads, you want to make the actual does this make sculpture is a, is one of the main um, uh, functions in the in the program because it generates everything really. It's sort of like the core one essentially. Make sculpture is like the core function that is sort of the central function if you will um and then also we just want to add a listener for the so if the export glb which if you remember i'll just say i was mentioning about you want the export button we need to add an event listener for that <clears throat> and then the uh, the function above for exporting to gltf which will then uh, export the actual scene so that's what that's doing and obviously that's optional it's not it's not actually uh, um, required. So I'll just go over the uh, random, because I was saying before about the, this is quite used quite frequently throughout um, the generate random number function, which accepts minimum ma max as a parameter. And um, I mean, essentially what it does is just, it gets the parameter here, minimum, um, does some ceiling and flooring on them, and then it just returns a, um, a random value between the minimum and the max, and um, that works. So that's used quite frequently. A lot of the other, uh, there's a lot of randomized functions which I'll talk about as well. In fact, actually, I'll, I mean, instead of going straight into the main uh, function, which is the make sculpture, I'll actually talk about each of these individually. Um, gen artwork as well, which is a, which is basically a, a big function too. But I'll talk about all of these other functions, which are sort of like lower down in the hierarchy, which may be reused multiple times, basically. Um, so let's talk maybe first about randomized piece. So this is, uh, it should be fairly apparent what this does if you're just looking at it. Um, we have uh, an array we create with all the different types of uh, primitive that um, can be generated in A-frame, I think. I'm pretty sure I've got most of them. Most of the common ones, anyway. I mean, I've, obviously I could probably grow and build on this a bit. We have a, we generate a random index. Um, we then run on the other functions. So like I said, a lot of these functions sort of feed into each other and are reused a lot. Um, so we run the generate random number between zero um, and then the, uh, the length of the pieces. So basically just what I was doing is between this and whatever the length of this is, 
it just it finds a random index, selects a random index based on the length and uh, starting from zero, of course. And then the random piece that's actually selected, because basically every this 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 function is used for um, gen basically just selecting a random uh, in the for loop further up, basically for selecting a random piece of geometry and just selecting it for creation basically and then we just pass this and then we pass an index value so randomly generated index value as you can see and then we just return the random piece um, and I can talk more about how that's happening but that essentially like uh, what I'm doing for a lot of them is it is just doing this sort of like uh, yeah, um, random index array lookup sort of thing um, texture IDs so this is using the data that we've been we passed from the component itself we pass it uh, like I said with the, the IDs for each component it's generically empty but if you're using customized textures you, you'll pass it whatever your texture IDs are again similar very very similar code almost the same generates a random um, index value we and uh, also it takes into account the texture ID's length from the data. So that could be anything from zero, I don't know, one to a hundred or thousand or whatever. It just takes into account that. Uh, I'm not really stress tested it using like a million or anything stupid. Like Obviously, I'm not going to load in a million textures, but in theory, that should work. And then again, just uses the reference to this and uh, random index value that's been generated with the generate random number function and just returns a random texture. Um, again, like literally the same for most of them really. There's just a little variation. Um, that's basically doing the same thing with models. Basically almost the same thing. It's just different data. I could actually probably just put that all into one function but I don't know. It's probably not worth it. Randomized color is I uh, basically just that's for the um, so I got this code. I actually found this code. I didn't write it myself, but basically just ra generates a random hex value, uh, which you can then apply um, for colors. That's all it does. It's a const random color generates a random value. La 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 to string. I can't. I mean, I don't know everything that's going on there. It just basically just generates a random color he a hex value for colors. So and then this final one export to GLT and then if it's flagged true it just runs that function and that's just there for you know if the user clicks on that um, so that's that I'll go up now and we'll basically um, there's no real we're not using tick or anything remove or like anything like this this was something I was messing with it's not probably going to be for the update <clears throat> okay so I'll talk about the make sculpture which I said is like one of the main parts so uh, we've just got like a, we assign a um, variable of type let ID. This will be used later on for the for loop. I mean, I'm just using a for loop for the actual generation. Um, maybe there's more efficient ways of doing it, but it seems to work. Um, so again, these are just like a bunch of these sort of the flags for the, um, the sort of more generic customized elements, basically. So we've got the, the flat option, cons, these are always these are always going to be constantly the same thing, they're never going to change, you've got to reassign, so I just use the define them as const. And then I create a new object with all those values in so I can easily access them further down in the loop. Uh, I do this so that I, what I was doing before actually, which was uh, not as efficient, was I was basically checking it every time in the for loop, but that's obviously not as efficient, so I just did it so it checks it once because these are consts anyway, and then it just checks and then I reference the um, um, uh, Well, you'll see like I basically pass the options to the gen artwork, which is where a lot of things happen as well This could probably be like a little bit. It's a bit confusing actually in a lot of spots This could probably be just put down to it could probably actually be split into one, but That's just the way I did it. So I'm using a for loop there. I'm, I mean, if you're any knowledgeable of programming, you know what a for loop is. I've just got um, the ID is initially just set to zero. We start off at that. We just want to uh, the ID is used as a way to reference where we are basically in the in the the entity hierarchy. We the amount comes from 
whether it makes corpses cord which is cord at the top so right where it's cord up here we've got in there so random fun so like i said that that's a random number that's generated for the amount of entities you want to create and that's that basically random fun make is amount so that's that i should probably make that more, more clear it's a bit unclear actually but basically that's that's a randomly generated number with the minimax values and then uh, running this for loop for that amount of times we pass the ID for the gen artwork because that's important for as a reference to because um, this is basically gen artwork is where all the entities positioning a lot of the randomization basically where a lot of the actual creation takes place data which we want to pass it down again and then the options which like I said again just just defines what booleans and sort of special modes have been engaged basically lights is um, this is just something for the lights this can probably be a bit um so the way i've done it is basically i check if the id is divisible by two the modulus and if the lights flag is on so we only do this if the lights is mode is on so this can probably be improved a bit actually but yeah i literally create a new document create element a entity with um you know, javascript with an ljs um and it's just uh, create some initialize some let variables so they can be reassigned because they will be and for rotation too um and yeah like just literally just um i mean this is not actually as sophisticated in its randomness as the other things i might change it later but um yeah then you got random uh, generate some random x y z values same for the intensity and then we random like color that runs that function we used before converts it to a string so it's a string definitely and then we're using set attribute to um, and then we just insert these values in uh, I won't go to cover that too much though actually because it's sort of a sideline really what we want to look at is this gen artwork and then after we've done this it's basically all the component code covered essentially this has gone on for a while sorry but I mean if covering everything so we passed in the id passed in the data from the top and options so we create variables type let which will be for the x y and z coordinates same for the scale and i've initialized it with a random with uh, initial values for the x y and z scale is going to be zero um i initialized the uh, and then again, this remember this is running tons of times. So we've got a data of a random seed, and then I generate a random number. So the seed value uh, comes into play there, where you've got a the random randomized seed, and we do the same for scale, and we generate a random value um, based on um, like a minimum. For the scale which is 0 0.5 which is a little bit smaller than one and then we just give it the random seed scale. so that, if you give it like a random seed scale of i don't know 500 it's going to be huge <laughs> potentially scale so i hope that makes sense again look if you just look i'm using the generate random numbers probably the most used utility function in this in this component which makes sense but again um i'm just trying to use things again as much as possible avoid duplication of unnecessary duplication um, and then we, we've, where we've got these uh, random values, so just generate a random number. So they give it the num random uh, minimum and the random seed random. Wait on. Oh, yeah. Wait, have I just discovered a bug? What's that? Uh, wait. I think. Well, I think I might have just discovered a bug. I might have to fix that. <laughs> it's like random seed scale, random. Okay. All right. Anyway, um, I might have to fix something there. I just realised that that's the like scale random in Y. That's not to do the scale. That should be that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's a bit odd. I think I might just discover the bug on my own. <laughs> component as well, I'll fix it, but yeah, that should probably be. We've got the. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, if 
probably needs to be no, I don't want to set to random let's try it I want to see what this does actually I just have to fix it it's a bit unprofessional anyway. well, it's not really professional but, uh, you want to, I'm going to just change that it shouldn't be this is not a thing to do with the scale this is the positioning so sorry I apologise I just I, sh I sort of made a mistake there actually in my code um, the we want to generate a random number between uh, maybe zero and the random seed scale number. I'll test that actually in a minute. Um, but I'll move on apart from that. I think I just did that as a copy and paste by accident. <laughs> um, yeah, because that's the seed value. So the scale and all that, all that, that's all. Yeah. Anyway, so we, if we've got the, if the options for flat, um, are false. So if it's not flat, then we basically go and do um, generate random number again. So we want the y values to be up like that, and then the z two random scale x. Da, 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 sort of similar thing. You sort of get the idea. It's basically just using this generate random number loads of times <laughs> with like reassignment in the loop, so that it can just get reassigned every single time one's made. Um, if the flag for this is just simple if else for the uh, custom GLB model. So obviously, like if we want to return, um, we uh, demonstrated the randomized GLB before, so we just do a create a create a new um, we call that let variable there. We reassign it to an entity. We we run the function randomized GLB with the state being passed down, and we set the attribute to the GLTF model and hash, and then just the uh, what's returned from the randomized GLB, which gives us the reference for the uh, random GLB, basically. And else, it just does it randomizes a piece, which is the code I showed before for creating a random entity, and. We just basically create that, and it, it's because it returns out from the function. If the color state's on, we run the random color function, and we set the attribute on the generated piece reference to uh, the random color, the hex value that's returned. And for the textures, similar again, just texture, randomized texture function, which returns the one of the randomized. Um, textures and then we set the material source there that's important part to the ID of that basically um, and then yeah we pass it a position for the each individual one remembering this is running half many times the random number generators run and we go we set it to yeah we set it like this we set position and I'm gonna give it like that random X random Y random Z Random scale, random scale, random scale, give it a name and a class. And then, the, so it's gem piece. So this just helps for knowing where I'm, where we're at, if we need to refer to it at any point. I give it an ID as well. And then I just added this in as well, roughness and mountainness. Probably that could be taken out. And then this element, we just append a chart. So this element refers to the component itself, which is gen, run gen. And we just add that piece and that like if for example if we generate 200 pieces this core piece of code just run 200 times that in a nutshell quite a long nutshell to be fair but that is that basically i'm just going to quickly test that i think i just found a bug which is quite nice so i'm just going to test that it still works all right i'm pretty sure it'll work better now obviously hopefully and i'll just quickly check one of the demos uh, but yeah that's that Quite a long video because quite a lot to cover actually. Now, so it's quite a lot of done really, to be honest. Yeah, so this should. Yeah, yeah, that looks. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so there was a bit of clumping before, which is still there, but that seems fine still. So that's good. I'm just gonna. Yeah, that looks better. That looks generally somewhat better. So actually a bit more spread, which is not a bad thing. And I'm just going to quickly check on the primitive one. I just want to check a few things because I just modified the code, obviously. Uh huh. Yeah, pretty works the same. Right? So, okay, anyway. 
Anyway, that is that. I've been honoured. I know there's been a lot to go over. You can basically watch the video in two parts if you want the, the sort of covering the code bit, uh, the component code, and looking at the demos and how to use it. I hope you find it useful. It's MIT, so you can reuse it, mess around with it, make your own version, do whatever you want, really. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, like and subscribe if you like it. Uh, it's the first video I've done for a while. I've been busy doing this, so I'm busy coding and uh, also just uh, other things as well, basically, in life. So that's it. Anyway, I'll say uh, bye from that note and.